Hey there, internet. My name's Luxander, and today we're gonna be doing a vlog. I make no promises for the quality of the editing or recording in this video. Happy Pride! It's June. Happy Pride! If you're at all interested in my opinions on the kink at Pride discourse that we seem to have annually, uh, you can check out this video that I made uh, two years ago that tells you what my opinion about that is. It don't- I don't believe my opinion has changed. We're doing a vlog today because it has been a little while since I posted a video. I posted a video at the end of April, and then I was gone all month in May. And I've talked to my patrons a little bit about this, but I haven't talked to you publicly about this. For a bit there, I was just kind of depressed in general. I've been out of work for a while. The job search is going more difficult than it should. So I was kind of just depressed in general for a bit there, like the first half of May. It is at this time that I will pause and give some content warnings I'm going to be talking about death, um, specifically uh, two instances in which it has recently occurred in my life, so that's your warning, I guess. To be clear, it's not all bad news, but I am going to be starting on the bad news. In mid-May, one of my three cats became very suddenly ill, and he passed away pretty much the same day. Like, we woke up in the morning, he seemed like he might be injured, and we took him to the vet, and they were basically like, there's not really anything you can do about this. Maybe if you had like a couple thousand dollars, he could go into intensive care, but the type of issue that he had, he would likely have remained permanently injured, e even if he did survive, which, so it's like a pretty low chance that he would have survived. And then even if he had, there's a pretty good chance that he would have been permanently disabled. It is surprisingly not gotten easier to talk about. <laughs> His name was D in the Mighty, and there are a lot of videos of him on this channel, actually. Uh, there's a playlist. I think he's in all of the videos that I've uploaded that have cats in them. So, he was a rescue. We found him and his litter mates when they were, like, very new. Like, their eyes were not open yet. Uh, and we had him for 11 years. So yeah, he was a really sweet cat. I liked him a lot. I lived with him almost his entire life. I had kind of taken a lot of responsibility for taking care of him. So like, he's my partner's cat, but in every meaningful way he was also my cat. There was only like three months toward the beginning of his life that I didn't live with him. So like, it, you know, it was a really difficult situation having to deal with my own first real experience with like, death in that way. Like, members of my family have passed away. Like, oh, your great-grandma passed away, and I'm like, alright, cool, I haven't seen her in years. That's sad, but doesn't really personally affect me. And I've also had cats that have passed away, but usually it's like, oh, like, my dad's cat, who has been living with my grandma for a number of years, got hit by a car. And that was really sad for me at the time, but it didn't, like, stick with me. Um, and the other situations like, oh, this cat that, like, I haven't spoken to my mom in years, and she just happens to have the cat that it used to be my cat, and then, like, I hear from her that that cat died. I'm like, all right, again, sucks, but I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, this was, like, my relationship with my animals that I have right now is the longest running relationship that I've had with any animals like, the longest period of time that I've just lived with the same creatures. There was also a death within my husband's family over the past couple weeks, like, in the time since D the Mighty passed away, and I don't really want to go into detail about that because that feels like less, less of my story to tell, I guess, but it's just really shitty to have things happen so, so soon after each other, you know? And like, dealing with our cat passing away was largely us dealing with our grief. It was largely me and my partner, but having a family member pass away, like, it's gonna be more, like, involved. Like, there's more people involved, and, you know, you have to be aware of how other people are feeling about it and everything. So yeah, that's kind of, like, what I've been dealing with for the latter half of May up to now. So... Uh, that's like your update on why I was gone, I, I guess. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that I got a tattoo. I got a new tattoo, and I think that I'm really, I'm kind of upset that I've been planning this tattoo since like November or December, and 
it's a tattoo that has to do with death. And then my cat died <laughs> like two weeks before I was supposed to get the tattoo. So it's kind of upsetting. But the tattoo has like a meaning and a purpose. And it is also my homage tattoo to Unus Anus. If you're not familiar with Unus Anus, it was a YouTube channel that two of my favorite YouTubers got together and made. They did one video every day for one year. And at the end of the year, they deleted the whole channel. All of it's gone. And that was the artistic purpose. And I, I made another video that you can watch up here if you want to know more in depth like about that or why was it art, you know, any of that kind of thing. I talked about it in depth. And I have wanted to get a tattoo commemorating Unisonis because the purpose of it was like things don't last forever. You have to take opportunities while you can. You have to do the best with what you're given um, because everybody dies. So the tagline of the channel was Memento Mori. So Unis Anis means one year, and Memento Mori means remember death. Um, so I had this idea for this tattoo, and I guess I will show it to you now. Um, it's kind of hiding behind my hair and everything. So this guy was like my original idea for a tattoo. It's just like underneath my left clavicle on my chest, a cartoonish simple looking skull and on the on his left eye his whole eye socket is just enveloped by this really detailed rose this is just black line work and i'm probably not going to have it filled in or shaded or anything and out of his other eye there's a rosebud like reaching up toward my clavicle and then underneath it says memento mori in like a cursive script so um the idea behind it was that good things happen after death, like death is necessary and beautiful things can happen as a result of it or after it. And I got it because I think it's important to remember that things will end and that you have to use your time thoughtfully, you know, being like thoughtful about how you're spending your time working versus resting or enjoying yourself versus doing things you need to do all that kind of stuff. Um, and like, also, a bigger component of it now is like, how you treat people. Like, because any time could be the last time you see somebody, right? Like, we went to bed on like, a Thursday night, and didn't expect one of our beloved cats to be severely, severely not okay the next day. Like, he seemed totally fine, and then he just really wasn't, and the decline was really fast. There are, like, aspects in which I regret, like, sometimes, like, I would yell at him because he was talking to me all the time. He was really loud, like, and having three cats who kind of all want your attention all at the same time can be overwhelming, so it's understandable that I would be annoyed with him, but I feel bad for being annoyed with him. Um, you know, I didn't take him outside as often as he wanted to, stuff like that. So, I am trying to be thoughtful of being different as I go forward. Like, my guilt is somewhat justified because I wish I had done better. Like, my by my own standard, I wish I had done better. But he's dead, <laughs> so I can't change anything for him. But I can be more thoughtful and attentive toward my living animals. I still have two cats. One of them is one of his litter mates, and he is not having a good time right now. I wish it hadn't gone down the way that it did, but there was like genuinely nothing we could have done. And as far as like making his life last longer, so like I just have to be like, okay, if I notice any issues, like take him to the vet, or if I know about preemptive screenings that you can do, we should do those. And like, having a job will make that easier, obviously. We only have, like, one and a half incomes right now, basically. But I'm also making a point to, um, like, give my other cats attention if they want to get in my lap. I'm trying to be more lenient about that, excuse me, even though I have, like, really, I have pretty extensive demands about having personal space, but I'm trying to be like, okay, well, these cats need affection, and I am one of two people who's capable of giving it to them. 
So, yeah, I'm just trying to be more caring and try to be aware of when I'm being selfish, I guess. All things considered, I feel like I'm handling it pretty well. Obviously, I'm very sad, but that sadness is justified because someone I care about is dead. <laughs> By the way, when I laugh like that, that's me trying not to cry. So please don't think that I think that this is amusing. I'm just trying not to cry a bunch in this YouTube video. I also have like some other like minor stuff that I could be talking about on the channel. I'm not really sure how interested people would be. Like for example, I have recently taken up a non-spiritual neo-pagan practice and I've done like I did a lot of stuff for it for Beltane, Bioltana, however you want to say it. Uh the May Day celebration. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I sort of dedicated that time to myself. Uh, I don't know if that's something that people would be interested in. Especially like, I'm doing this weird like very picky and choosy kind of thing with it because I'm not a spiritualist. So yeah, if that's something that would interest you, let me know and I'll consider talking about it more. In the meantime, I don't really have any specific plans at this moment for content to do for Pride, if you have anything you'd like to see from me, if you have any- if there are any discussion topics that you see going around that I haven't covered before, you can, uh, like, let me know in the comments, because I- I like to talk about things that I'm interested in, but it also helps if I know what you all actually want to hear, like, if there's something that you think I have a particular angle on that other people wouldn't, that would be very useful as far as inspiration goes for me right now. I feel like that's enough crying in public for one day, so I will leave you there. Thank you for watching the video, that's gonna be all for me today. If you like it, you can hit the like button and give me pretty analytics to look at or comments to read. And you can always find me on Patreon or PayPal to assist, because I am still not employed. Uh, you can also subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I upload if you would like to. And I hope you have an okay day. Bye. Thank you so much to my patrons for not only their support, but for their patience over the last two months as I have been attempting to get myself to make videos again. Especially I wanted to shout out Sean, Eris, Michelle Winter, R. Halverson, Sarah A., Suzanne Maynard, Wellington Marcus, Athiette, Mayor Treebeard, Amanda B., Elizabeth Bartell, Jonathan Armstrong, Mr. Atheist, and Frozen Summers.